China, throughout its history, can be divided into two portions, united or divided. The Qing, Song, Yuan, Han, Qin, these are all the names of dynasties that ruled China. Their empire stretched over all ethnic Han Chinese and threw their weight around. Until they didn't. Broken apart due to rebellion, secession crises, foreign invaders, and ran by incompetent children, these are the periods that we brush over when examining Chinese history. Remember, even China today is not fully unified. The last imperial China was the Qing Empire. The Qing Empire started when a foreign Manchu war chief known as Nurhasi unified the Manchus into a unified entity and invaded Ming China from the north. The Qing would grow into the largest China ever, encompassing Taiwan, Tibet, Mongolia, Manchuria, and Xinjiang. However, it faced technologically superior enemies, the Europeans, Russians, and Japanese. They tore at China's extremities until the Qing Empire collapsed in 1912, establishing yet another divided China. Japan, the first Asian nation to develop a modern economy, military, and political system, saw weakness in China. First taking Korea, then Manchuria, then eyed the whole of China. In 1937, the Marco Polo Bridge incident sparked the largest war in history, World War II. At the end, Japan laid in ruins, destroyed by eight years of total warfare and two nuclear bombs. In the aftermath, a civil war continued in China between the communists and the nationalists. The nationalists would be defeated and retreat to Taiwan, the communists taking over China as we know today. During these 2,000 years of covered history, Life for the average Chinaman remained the same. Wake up, toil in the rice fields, sleep, wake up, toil in the rice fields. China was an agricultural economy, meaning the majority of labor was done in rice fields and farms. The United Nations estimates 90% of Chinese lived in rural communities in 1950. The Chinese Communist Party, true to their name, wanted China to become a socialist industrial economy. So Mao Zedong, leader of the CCP, enacted the Great Leap Forward, where all private farms were to be collectivized, owned by the state, communes were to be set up, furnaces were to be in backyards, millions would be added to state employment as industrial workers, and millions more would starve to death. Just one of two self-destructive economic and social policies implemented by Mao Zedong. After the disastrous rule of Mao Zedong, Deng Xiaoping set the country on the path of economic reforms liberalizing the economy, allowing markets to set prices and wages, generally transitioning China into a market economy, but not fully. Socialism with Chinese characteristics is born. Some industries would be let free to the market, others such as steel, banking, petrol, and agriculture would remain owned by the state through SASAC. SASAC employed 60 million Chinese as of 2009 and made up 39.9% of the Chinese GDP. The reforms implemented by Deng would create the modern China we know now, the one we hear on the news, the one that people say will take over our position as a global superpower, growing twice or three times as fast as the United States, the Asian tiger. The market reforms allowed for an average 11% growth rate through the 90s up to 2009, where something happened. Economic growth slowed to 6%, with the US, then the world in a recession, no one had capital to purchase Chinese goods. The CCP, scared of the prospect of low growth, took action. They stimulated the economy with debt.